You see Todd White quoting Charles Spurgeon. Right. I was like, what is <laughs> yeah. going on? Repenting. Yeah, man, that was that was cool. That I haven't really... watched the full 45 minutes. I got about 30 minutes into it, then had to work with the client, gotcha. didn't come back to it. I did post a little two-minute yeah, snippet yeah. to our Instagram yep. page, yep. the part that I did watch, where he's talking about, you know, I don't think that I... He said for 16 years he didn't fully understand the gospel. Mm -hmm. He thinks that, you know, and then he started basically doing a, a Ray Comfort sketch. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he caught any of that, but, yep. you know, the are you a liar? Are you a thief? Well, then you've broken the law of God and you're in need of a Savior. Right. And he was saying basically he doesn't feel as if he was presenting the full gospel. Mm -hmm. And that's tough because at once you're, I'm cautiously optimistic about that. Right. Uh, it was really funny. He's in front of like 600 people, you know, giving this sermon and he goes, man, have you guys listened to Charles Spurgeon? That guy's been rocking me. And he's like, have you guys heard of Charles Spurgeon? Right. And everyone's silent. He brought up Whitfield. Whitfield. Yeah, yeah, and like... no one knows who. And I go, oh my gosh, a group of 600 Christians and I not know. one woo or yay. The yeah. Prince of Preachers. Right, right. Probably had some of the biggest impact on the last two centuries of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And they're going, no, we don't know. And right. now he's like, he's rocking my world. I'm like, dude, he's been rocking my world since you know, for right. 20 years. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you know, crazy. obviously through the, the Holy Spirit using his words were not putting uh, Charles Spurgeon, you know, right. on any type of yep. weird pedestal. Yeah, we're just yeah. saying yeah. when uh, a man or woman speaks the truth of God, it, you know, mm -hmm. it, it can cut you in a good way. Yeah. So I was cautiously optimistic. I go, well, you know, the, the way that you see true repentance is through the act mm -hmm. that come after. Not that you have to, that good works is required for repentance, but true rep repentance reflects acts right? And, and good acts. So, you know, hopefully he won't be a Benny Hinn who repents in uh, 2019 for asking for $1,000 and yeah. then three months later is on TBN asking for $1,000. Yeah. Like literally, like, <laughs> wow, his repentance lasted right. not even 90 days. He's, yeah. You know, it's it, so it, I'm I'm voting. I, I mean, I'm rooting <laughs> voting. Here we go with that. Um, uh, I'm rooting for uh, for Todd White for sure. You know, um, right. Uh, you know, because I mean, he was a huge part of when I first <laughs> was regenerated. I mean, I, I fell into the NAR right. new apostolic reformation stuff for about six months, um, realized that I was in complete error because of it, <laughs> you know, and yeah. found, um, you know, reformed, um, teaching and it just rocked me. So I pray that he's going through some of what a lot of us have been through. Yeah. You know, we, we are hurt by, um, you know, the works based gospel, the, the breakthrough gospel, the, um, I need a platform gospel and without, you know, with, with, without Christ as, um, uh, as the center of everything in your life. I mean, without it being all narcissism, all about me, sure. gospel, you know, it's like, man, oh man, like that's where you want to be, you know, and that's where reform teaching has been for me, yeah. you know, for the past couple of years. So, and the only thing that I would say that people might get a little upset and go, Greg, that seems harsh, but this is the way I truly feel. And I only, and I'm saying this about Todd White out of, uh, a place of, of love is if you're saying you did not for 16 years, you did not understand or preach the full gospel, then what you were preaching was a false gospel. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't teach the full gospel, you're teaching a false. Or so, you know, him just coming out in one sermon and saying, I've read a little Spurgeon. Right. I, I don't know if that's enough. Look at Todd, you know, I doubt you're listening to this podcast <laughs> But there know. has to be true repentance there. That means for the last 16 years when you are, you know, uh, doing sideshow magician tricks by changing the angle of people's legs to make it look like they're growing out and saying that, uh, you know, you haven't sinned in the last uh, 18 years right. because you have hyper grace and are so righteous that Christ has removed all sin from you or that you uh, have said that Christ emptied himself fully of divinity and was 100% yeah. man or, you know, all the egregious things that you have said that have impugned the name of God, there needs to be repentance from that. And I would say he, he needs to then sit under a shepherd or an elder or a pastor with sound biblical doctrine. Right. And probably not, not hold a position 
quite a while. Yeah. If you're teaching a false gospel, you should not be in a position of authority in the church. And that's not to demean or to discipline right. or, well, it is to discipline yeah, a little bit, you know, it church is. discipline, yeah. biblical discipline, biblical. Yeah. But to, you know, too often it's, we've let, we let leaders go so far into the kind of heresy playground. Yeah. And then when they just back off just a little, we're just so grateful that they come back a little bit. You just go, Oh, okay. Well, you know, he said a couple things I wanted to hear. 